Hello and welcome to the DVD bonus footage for the Jeweler's Lathe Part 4 video, Making Tailstocks for Fun and Profit. In this video I'm going to go through how I went about machining the tailstock housing. If you were so inclined, you could use the exact same methods I'm about to show here on the headstock as well. I happen to CNC machine the headstock, but I do maintain it can be manually machined. The first thing I like to do when I'm machining a fairly complex part like this is to get the stock down to size. Once I've got the stock nice and square and parallel and down to size, I can start working from the outside in on the external features. So I've got the stock nice and square and down to size, so I can start working on the external features. The first is going to be the two ears on either side of the part. And I'm basically just going to use an end mill to, uh, to cut away the material. And I'm going to leave it square for now, but I'll be cutting the angle later. You'll notice that I occasionally climb mill when I'm manual machining. Typically I avoid climb milling at all costs and really grabbing materials like brass and also stronger materials like steel. But the cutting forces are actually really low in aluminum so I usually am okay with climb milling so long as it's a light cut. I'm cutting down and uh, feeding in Y in this section because I want to sort of set myself a limit that I can auto feed to. Uh, I only actually have auto feed in X on this machine and being slightly lazy I kind of want to use the auto feed because it's more consistent so I'm basically setting myself a, an envelope for where I have to stop and then I'll, I'll do a finish pass after. So when I set up on this side, I had to make sure the ear wasn't actually touching the casting on the vise, because the casting part of the vise isn't very square. This is basically a rinse and repeat of the other side with some slightly different dimensions.
I typically don't worry about drilling holes until I get closer to the end of the part. Like, the main thing for me is, is to get the shape done first, and then I'll go in and do details. But I was already set up, and I already had the final dimension on this side, so I just decided to drill these holes while I was here. So I've got the basic outline of the part here, so I'm going to start by knocking through this main bore, and I'm just going to do that with increasingly larger drills until I get to, uh, I think, three quarters of an inch, and then I bring it to size with a boring head. I typically go to fairly extreme lengths to avoid having to use a boring head, but there are some situations where you can't really get away from it. I just happened to not have the right size drill, so I had to use a boring head here. Uh, I actually goofed a bit and I made the diameter a little too large, but it's actually just a clearance hole, so it doesn't really affect the function of the part. So this hole here is actually just the beginnings of a keyway, and um, I'm just drilling it out for convenience. It's a good way of getting material out. Um, I'll bring it to size using a 3 16 inch end mill. If I'm drilling a bunch of holes, um, I won't do all the center drills at once. I often break them up into sort of discrete patterns so I can remember the numbers. And um, it's a little more inefficient to change tools so much, but it makes me make fewer mistakes. It really makes you miss CNC as well. So with reamers, it's really important that you use a lot of lubricant because your uh, your flutes aren't as angled, so it's harder for the chips to move up. You also want to go a little slower, so you know half the speed, twice the feed, and you want to feed faster because you want each of the you know six to twelve flutes to uh, bite off a fair share of material instead of just rubbing, which will make your bore oversized. So that's what I always remember: half the speed, twice the feed.
So this is actually the purpose for those reamed holes. It's basically just for setups. It's to use like a sign bar, so I made a, a block of a known height. I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it lets me set angles quite quickly and fairly accurately. Uh, you can see I've just got some brass round in there, which, you know, is fairly close to the right diameter, so... Yeah, I can set up uh, pretty quickly, and it also gives me some pretty useful uh, locations to, uh, to edge find later on. While I was set up at this angle, I decided to knock this corner off to finish the chamfer. I could have set it up again uh, using the sort of sign block method again, but, you know, I was already here, so whatever. So when I power tap on this part, just because I put so much time in it, I try not to tap too deep. So I'll usually just use like a spiral point tap to start the hole and then I'll come in later and finish with a hand tap. So this is the other application of these little holes. I can use them to edge find like this on the sides. So if I'm say drilling a hole on this angled surface where I don't really have any great locating features, I can actually get a, a fairly precise uh, position for it. I think I'm indicating that I can use this edge as a reference, but I don't know, it's so subtle. So again here I located off that center dowel, um, so I can get a pretty precise position on this hole. So this setup is pretty sketchy, but if you look at the two operations I'm doing, it's actually not too too bad. I basically just wanted to chamfer that one hole, and now I'm just going to machine this keyway. And the, the forces are mostly in line with the, um, the sort of force path going through the part from the vise. So again, I mean, a bit of a sketchy setup, but it still worked and I was still pretty comfortable with it.
One part of machining I've really come to enjoy is filing. So if you remember that a file is actually a cutting tool, and uh, you have a good posture, you take your time, and you plan each stroke, you can actually get some really amazing surface finishes. I can get fairly consistent chamfers now by filing, and like I said, I actually kind of enjoy it. So I'm sure a few of you are wondering why I didn't just broach this hole. So I would actually have broached this hole if it was more of a standard size keyway, but it's just so deep and the diameter is kind of weird. Uh, I didn't have any of the standard pilots for it, so um, this is just faster, I think. So that's how I went about machining the tailstock. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know in the comments if the sort of narrated style is okay or if you want me to just shut up and machine, which I can totally respect. Um, after I finished machining the part, I wrapped it in paper and sent it out for anodizing. I didn't try to do that myself, although someday I'll try. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you're looking forward to the next video, and hopefully I get it out soon. Cheers!